Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston uh, Station, we are ready. WFMY TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is WFMY TV. Can you hear us okay? Got you loud and clear. How me? All right, we're ready to roll. But Tom, I got to tell you how excited I am to do this because you are living out what most little boys think about. I know for me, growing up in North Carolina, being an astronaut was a pretty cool thing. So, uh, you know, for all the kids and the, and the boys out there in the office and the women, too, who want to be astronauts, that's a very good thing what you're doing up there. Hey, thanks very much. Yeah, I was a uh, little kid dreaming that as well, and uh, it can happen. It's, uh, I still can't believe I'm up here uh, most of the time. It's a real privilege, a real honor, but it's a lot of fun. It's definitely work, worth uh, the trip getting here. Now, is this your first time, or Tom, how many times have you been into space? This is my second flight into space. In um, 2009, I came to visit the space station, did some construction work, on the space shuttle. And uh, we came up here and added some parts and did three spacewalks. So it's been three years, but once we came back on this trip two weeks ago, I uh, arrived on the Soyuz and I uh, feel like I just uh, hadn't left the place almost. It almost felt like home. So you have to describe for me, and I've always tried to visualize what this would be like, and you mentioned spacewalk. That was going to be one of my questions about when you do the spacewalk, and I know obviously no gravity, no atmosphere, but you, do you get the sensation that you're moving as fast as you are when you're outside of the space station? Well, you know, there's no atmosphere up here, so there's really no um, sense of movement. However, the Earth is going by very quickly. It's a beautiful panorama that's going by us. We'll go around the world in 90 minutes. I can get across um, uh, North America in just about 15 minutes. You have to be very quick to get a good look out there. Uh, but I think you're right. I think uh, when you're in the spacesuit with the wonderful view you have through your visor, uh, sometimes if you're uh, not prepared for it and you suddenly look down at the Earth below, you can be caught by the rush of the Earth going by quite a bit. And also it makes me think of, uh, you know, time and scheduling. Do you guys just decide what your body clocks will be when you get into space? Because obviously no time zone to worry about because you're up there. How do you dis discern between night and daytime when it's time to work and time to go to sleep? Well, our lives are, are very carefully uh, constructed uh, around five-minute intervals, believe it or not, uh, all day, every day, uh, by the mission controls, both in Moscow and in Houston. So uh, to split the difference between the two countries, uh, we operate on Greenwich Mean Time, uh, and so that's what I'm living off of right, right now. Uh, we have to sleep shift every once in a while to accommodate uh, a new vehicle coming up, a cargo vehicle, or um, uh, any other operation like when we arrived up here. So it's, uh, you can't look out the window and tell what time it is uh, for sure. We have to go by our clocks and by the schedule that's in all the computers, and we consult that very often. Is there much of a difference now? I know this time you arrived through uh, the Russian spacecraft. The last time, was that a Russian vehicle or was it the United States when you did your first space trip? Came up on the shuttle on my first space uh, flight. And this time it was on the Soyuz, and I've heard it described uh, by a lot of people as uh, the shuttle is kind of like a, uh, a big truck, and the Soyuz is like a little sports car. It was a wonderful ride up here, pretty incredible uh, piece of technology. It's uh, very similar to what it was like in the 70s. They make uh, upgrades quite a bit, so the inside, the electronics has changed completely, but the, uh, the thrusters are quite a bit the same. Um, it felt like riding in a canoe that was being controlled by sledgehammers. Uh, the, uh, the rockets are, are knocking you to and fro because the Soyuz is quite a bit smaller than the, Soyuz, than the shuttle. And, um, but it was just beautiful how, despite these big rocket firings, it was able to just nudge right up to the space station and just slide into, the, uh, into docking uh, just perfectly, uh, all automatically. We were ready to take over if we needed to, but the automatics worked perfectly this time. It was a beautiful spaceship. That's amazing. You know, it makes me wonder, and since you're, you know, a, an old pro at this, and now we hear a lot of talk about privatization of rides into outer space, I mean, do you think that's within the foreseeable future? 
Well, I think it's uh, it's inevitable, actually, and I wouldn't be surprised if in five to ten years uh, tickets are available to fly into space for at least short trips. The uh, you know any any major uh, transformation in technology, especially transportation, usually starts with uh, some uh, wealthy individuals uh, making the first leap, taking a lot of the uh, business risks, and uh, in this case, probably some uh, taking on some uh, health risks as well coming up on the new vehicles, but uh, it's very exciting to see what's happening. It's very exciting to, to be a part of it. We hope to get a cargo vehicle up here, uh, at least uh, hopefully two of them actually, to be able to grab them and, and dock them to the space station. There won't be people in those. It'll be just some of our cargo. But uh, this is the next step in the evolution of uh, a spacefaring nation, and we're very excited about it. I know you're from Statesville, North Carolina, and I was wondering, do they let you contact your family very often when you're in outer space? And if you do, is it a phone call or a video call? How does that work? It's both. We actually have what's called Internet Protocol phone up here. It allows me to uh, go through my laptop, bounce off a whole bunch of satellites, and actually dial any phone number in, in the United States. So I uh, have a conversation quite often with my wife, just call her on her cell phone. Uh, we do have about once a week, we have a, um, a video conference as well where I get to see their faces and they get to see mine and we get to chat for a little bit uh, for about 15 minutes or so. So uh, they've done a, made a lot of great strides in uh, keeping us together as a family while we're so isolated and so far away up here in space. So that's a real nice thing to have. Well, we only have a few, just a short amount of time left. One more quick question and that is, uh, what type of experiments are you working on, Tom? There is uh, about 130 up here. Uh, I'm involved in all of the life sciences experiments that I could sign up for. I'm uh, doing some of the experiments on some of my crewmates. I am actually the guinea pig in some of them. Um, and we're also just operating some working in the, in the racks, some uh, cellular biology um, and uh, microbial biology and protein crystal growth as well. But I'm going to be working on uh, quite a bit of ultrasound, uh, cardiac monitoring. We're looking at uh, how the, the heart behaves in space. As you may know, uh, space flight is, is, in a lot of ways, in a lot of organ systems, is like rapid aging, high radiation environment. Uh, there's not any gravity that we have to work against, so our bones and our muscles uh, atrophy and they age uh, much faster. So you can get done in just a few months up here what might take uh, decades to do on the ground, or in the radiation case, uh, you can't even do it on the ground. You can't recreate it uh, of the same type. So. Uh, I'm going to be involved with a lot of that. Very excited about seeing what the results are going to be. I just did an ultrasound of uh, many of the organs of my body and my blood vessels just a couple of days ago. At the end of this week, I'm going to be starting a, a lot of uh, cardiac examinations on myself, uh, a constant EKG that's going to be, going to be uh, done. Have to draw a lot of, lot of blood and uh, keep that in the freezer and bring it back. And uh, very excited to see what the results are going to be. And real quick, just to satisfy my curiosity, which is more unnerving, the blast off or re-entry? Well, I, I can't tell you about the re-entry in the Soyuz, uh, but both of them are with uh, great amounts of excitement, so I wouldn't say unnerving. Uh, you know, at that time, you're in the, the hands of, of the laws of physics, and there's not much you can do about it, particularly on the re-entry. Uh, the uh, Liftoff is much more dynamic, shaking, rocking, and rolling on your way up, very loud. Uh, whereas re-entry can be quite, uh, at least on the shuttle, it was fairly quiet. It was very interesting, though, to feel the onrush of air and to feel the, the Gs come on as you uh, got into the denser part of the atmosphere. I hear the Soyuz landing is uh, much more of a wild ride as you come under the parachutes after re-entering the atmosphere. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Better you than me, Tom, although I wish I could do it. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Great talking to you. As station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WFMY portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WCNC.
And station, this is Houston ACR. Stand by just one second for WCNC. Okay. <laughs> Another man going through. <laughs> <laughs> this is the space station. I read somebody loud and clear. How do you read me? This Lori Sprinkle here in Charlotte. You sound great. Good to hear your voice. Are we rolling, or are we ready to go here? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Cruising at about 14,000 miles an hour, about 240 miles above us, Dr. Tom Marshburn from Statesville, North Carolina. You're looking good up there. Hey, hey thanks very much. I appreciate it. It's only been two weeks. We'll, we'll see. You are uh, cruising about uh, 14,000 uh, miles above, 14,000 miles an hour. Hey, what would you like to say to, the, to your uh, friends and family down here in this area? In this, are you from Statesville originally? Oh, it's just uh, have all of you here in my heart with me up here in space. It's a beautiful place, a wonderful thing. I wish I could see you. Uh, it's been a little bit cloudy here recently when I've had a chance to look down, but... I'm hoping at some point in the next five months I'll have a chance to look down and wave and say hello. You know, you've, you've been up there for a couple of weeks now, uh, blasted off with a with a Russian and a Canadian. How what was that experience like on the Soyuz? Oh, it was wonderful. You know, I, I launched on the shuttle, the space shuttle, uh, on a mission three years ago, and uh, the launch. You know, when you're sitting on a whole big pile of propellant and it explodes under you, it feels about the same no matter what vehicle you're in. Uh, the staging was quite a bit different, though, in the Soyuz. When you go from your third stage to your second stage, a lot more kicks uh, as the stage is light uh, to keep pushing you up uh, through the atmosphere and into space. But the Soyuz is a good bit smaller than the shuttle. It's like a little sports car. So uh, it was really very exciting to be in that spacecraft and the way it uh, maneuvers is completely different. So we had a good time. Amazing experience. Uh, you know, when, you, when we down here on Earth think about the where you are, the International Space Station, I've heard it described as like a uh, three-bedroom house. How would you describe the International Space Station? Well, in terms of the size, it's grown to about a five-bedroom house. But what you see right now is it looks like a laboratory, and that's exactly what it's like. Uh, you're, we live and we we live where we work. We live inside of a laboratory, and so there's a whole bunch of modules. The whole Russian segment behind us, um, so it's it's very roomy. I don't feel uh, too confined at all. There is uh, some beautiful windows that we can look out of when we have a few minutes of time, so we can look at the Earth going by below us. So that's very nice. One of the the biggest differences, though, from a regular home is, as you can see, we're doing experiments on the ceiling, on the walls, and on the floor. It's all around us. Uh, as a matter of fact, right here, I've got my, uh, I've got my dinner right here in an envelope. Let's see, I'm going to have a uh, grilled pork chop tonight. So uh, everything you have at home that you live with is right here in the laboratory with us. That has to be, I mean, meals ready to eat. I guess you, that's how you describe that. So everything is uh, sealed and uh, ready for consumption. Do you have to cook that? There's a little oven about the size of a suitcase. We just warm it up. And then uh, right behind me, again on the ceiling, is a little refrigerator and the water fountain so we can rehydrate things if we need to. But um, the food's really good. I've, uh, I've had meals ready to eat before, and those are pretty good, but the food up here is excellent. So, you know, when we think, of, think about your time up there, uh, you are a physician. And uh, what are some of your responsibilities there? I know there's a lot of research that's being done continually every day, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, about 130 experiments going on right now, and we've, we're all uh, signed up for doing all the experiments. I did, uh, I was looking forward to very much to the life sciences, life sciences experiments. I'm uh, involved in quite a number of those. 
Uh, you always have two crew medical officers on board, and since I'm a physician, naturally I became one of the medical officers, but one of my crewmates is also one because, you know, the doctor could get sick too. So we always have two on board. Everyone uh, that I talked to when I mentioned I was going to be speaking to you, they said, this one of the uh, questions is, well, you know, when you're up there, uh, where does the water supply come from? Is it recycled? And how is it actually using the restroom at uh, 240 miles above Earth? That's a great question. And it's actually, uh, I think it's a very exciting uh, aspect of this space station and the technology on board of it. Right now, we're at zero water balance. That is, um, we are recreating all the water that we drink and part of that's uh, reusing what we put out. So uh, yesterday's coffee becomes tomorrow's coffee sometimes. But uh, the system works wonderfully. We spent a little bit of time in water processing up here just to manage, uh, under the direction of mission control, manage the water balance up here. Um, and in terms of the uh, using the, the bathroom, well, it's uh, you got four walls. You don't have an open window where we are. So other than the zero gravity aspect of it, uh, which is actually pretty significant, um, and your body getting used to that. Uh, other than that, it's kind of like on Earth. <laughs> oh, one of our final questions is what, yeah, I mean, if you were to describe uh, the biggest challenge that you have on the International Space Station for the, for the next six months, what would that be? Well, I think it's going to be uh, completing the work program. It's, it's aggressive. Um, but it's it's exciting where we really want to get it all done and uh, you know the hardware needs to cooperate with us and so we're going to be using everything we've ever learned as well as once you come up here you realize this is a different world that cannot be cre recreated on earth at all that's uh, why we're using it as a laboratory but it also gives us lots of challenges to get things done because things float away we lose them we we lose our uh, our footing uh, you have to learn how to stand walk eat and just function in space so fulfilling that to uh, to the full degree, that's going to be the biggest challenge, I think. Dr. Tom Marshall, thank you so much for taking the time to, to speak to us. And, and, and we, being here in the Charlotte area, the States, we're really proud of, of what you have done and the whole crew and look forward to seeing you back on Earth in about six months. It's great to hear your voice. Say hello to everyone for me. Thanks very much. At station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. And thank you, WFMY-TV and WCNC-TV station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.